Okay, we will make you live in three, two, one. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Midwest Speed Fling. I am BZ Archer. I'm going to be your host for the next few runs. We're getting ready to do our first online run of one, uh, one shot with Konosumi. But before that, before that, chat, we have a three hundred dollar donation from Platinum Azure saying leet dollars for leet charity. That brings our total to one hundred thirty one thousand three hundred thirty seven dollars. Thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you so much for the meme. Uh, that money is all going to the VH1 Save the Music Foundation to help uh, with uh, music education and instruments for people who are in need of them and to keep music education alive. And we are so grateful for that. So thank you so much. And now we have our first online run. Konosumi, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm very excited to show one shot and begin the online block for mid-spring speed fling. All right. I would say we have we are ready to go here it looks like. So, yeah. do you need a countdown or do you know, roll with it? Yeah, I'll let you know when when time starts. It starts a little bit after I press start here. But yeah, That's welcome good. to One Shot. This is a really neat 2D adventure RPG maker game. And it has many fourth wall breaks and some really cool skips along the way. It's one of my favorite games. And I am really excited to showcase it to all of you in this marathon. Time will begin in three, two, one, go. All right. So here we're starting in the house, which serves as a tutorial stage. 8192, that's gonna be the code for the computer password. That was a really good code. So that code is randomly generated every single time. And the code is made consistent because we have a setting on that makes the numbers all the same. Here we're gonna learn how to do item crafting. We're gonna craft the alcohol with the branch to get a wet branch. Gonna stick that into the fireplace to start a fire. I would not recommend doing that in real life. And now we're able to get the basement key. And now we're going into the basement, which is gonna present us with the sun. The sun is a light bulb, but it's actually the sun of the world. Yes, I know, it's, it's a bit strange, but it's also really cool. So this light bulb is gonna be with us for the duration of the game, with the exception of one section where we leave it with someone for a bit. The objective is to deliver the sun to the center of the world in this massive tower. And once we get to the top of the tower, uh, that's when the game ends and we'll be able to send Nico back home. And with that, the house is done. So we learned about some of the random codes the game has. We're gonna be seeing that again later. And item crafting is something that will be encountered many, many times throughout the duration of the run. This here is the first part of the game, which is the Barrens. It's a very dark and gloomy place, and it's also the largest part of the game. Think of the world as like a circle. The outer ring, it's a circle consisting of three rings. The outer ring is the Barrens. I'm gonna go up here real quick so I can get this fast travel point. This game does have a fast traveling system which allows you to cover a lot of terrain pretty quickly. And we use that to our advantage by fast traveling between points as we unlock them. Also, you may notice that Nico's looking a little weird in these cutscenes if you've played the game before. And there's also this really strange meowing noise. That's because this game has a really cool April Fool's joke <laughs> it's so cool. So on April Fool's specifically, that will change into that sprite and Nico will make cat noises whenever, uh, whenever they talk. So right there, I got into the bed and I took a nap. And what happened there was that the game actually closed and I had to reopen the game in order to proceed. 
And after every dream sequence, we get a, a bit of dialogue with Nico here, who is our protagonist. And as we go into the factory, we're going to have a Gordon Freeman moment, and we're going to make a crowbar out of this metal bar we found in one of the train cars. Lots of meowing along the way. So yeah, here's that fast traveling thing I was walking about. I'm going to walk into a new tile, unlock a fast travel point, go back to a previous fast travel point, and then fast travel to the new point that I just unlocked. And doing so reduces a lot of walking time because the spawn point for each fast travel point is fixed. It's like in the center of it. Meanwhile, where I enter in through the side of it. It's a pretty cool technique that saves quite a bit of time, even with the fast running speed enabled by default. So this here is Silver. Silver is a really cool character, and she's going to help us out by guiding us over to the mines, which are located over here. And in the mines, we're going to be getting some parts to construct a battery to fix a generator. That's the current quest that we're on. And the reason why we have to fix a generator is because all the robots here don't have life. They're just lifeless robots with no electricity or anything. And by restoring the generator, we help bring life back to the barons. It's pretty cool. So now that we got our parts... Oh, I'm sorry, what's that? I support giving life to robots at every opportunity. Heck yeah, <laughs> robots are cool. So here we got a pretty cool crafting section. This one is in multiple parts, and it's really important to have clean menuing, which that was mostly clean. That can be pretty tough to get right. And with that, we have our battery, put it in the generator, and life has been restored. But now, we have a safe code to enter. Remember those random codes that I mentioned? Well, there's another one, and this time, it's not even located in the game itself. It's actually located in my documents folder. And thanks to the community permitted one-shot utility, I had to pause for a moment so I can enter the, the save code. But yeah, the one-shot utility is a pretty cool program that the community allowed, and one of its features is that it reads the save code value um, without you having to open the documents folder. What the game does is that it puts a file in your documents folder, and it instructs you, instructs you to go open the file and view the save code that's in it. It's a really cool puzzle. One shot has a whole bunch of cool puzzles, but a lot of them are, um, a lot of them can be made faster or otherwise like skipped. Yeah, that save code in particular, I got a pretty lucky computer code at the start of the run, but then this save code was pretty unlucky because a lot of the men, a lot of the numbers are towards the center. You can get a number between zero and nine, and ideally you want either a really high number or a really low number for each value. And a lot of them were towards the middle which meant that I had to spend a little bit more time menuing. It doesn't lose a whole bunch of time, but it is is—it is a bit annoying. <laughs> so here we got the syringe. We're going to put it in this bubble. And now we're going to take this bottle that we got and fill it up with some smoke. There's a robot spelled R-O-W bot. And uh, we have to repair it so that we can access the next area of the, of the, of the game. And here I'm gonna get a few more things. Gonna get this sponge here. Our goal is to make an acidic sponge to clean a robot with. So now that we have all our parts, I'm gonna go back to the docks and start the epic item crafting sequence. Check this out, this is pretty cool. If I don't mess it up. <laughs> all right, that was still pretty good. And now we get to talk to the robot. Pretty cool. Yeah, Baron's is almost done. So the robot here is telling us to go back to Silver and talk. talk to her so that we can get something and get an amber. And this amber is going to help the robot guide us over to the Glen, which is the next area of one shot. And now we have a conversation with lots and lots of meowing. And now we're done. All we have to do now is go to the docks, equip the amber, and uh, get on our way. While we are being rowed, rowed, rowed your boat, do you mind if I uh, read another donation here? 
Go for it. Now is a perfect time. We have a $22.57 donation from Joe1215 that says, This is to appease George 3. Yo, George 3. <laughs> we'll find out we'll find out more about George later in the run. That is one instant another instance where luck comes into play with one shot. Interesting. Yeah. I also don't I also do want to remind, uh, while the cutscene is loading here, that we do have some bid wars open, including for the file name for our next run of Delta Rune. So if you want to donate and select that file name, please get those donations in. Delta Rune is a pretty cool game. I would highly recommend donating for that bid war if you're able to. So now we're in the Glen. I like this area a lot. It's pretty bright, pretty green has some really cool scenery in it. And we just met Calamus, who is a one of the main characters in one shot. One of the main like supporting characters. And he's in a bit of a dilemma because his sister is missing. And our current objective is to go find her. And in order to find her, all oh, that. Oh, I got double blocked by the robot there. That was pretty unlucky. Sometimes that robot will just walk in your path. But I'm not <laughs> Uh, but when I tried to avoid the robot by walking to the left, it also walked to the left. So I had to find a way to go around it. That was pretty funny. But yeah, as I was saying before that happened, we had to save Alula and find her and return her to her brother. But before that, we're going to be dropping off the sun with Maze, who is a dying spirit who needs the warmth and comfort of the sun. And we're going to help her out with that by allowing her to have the sun for a bit. And while we do that, by giving her the sun, that's going to unlock the area where Alula's at, and we can go ahead and do that puzzle. So if you've played one shot before, you would know that there's a really cool puzzle where you talk to a computer, and it changes your desktop wallpaper to the solution to the puzzle. It is one of the coolest things I've seen in any game. This game has some pretty neat fourth wall breaks. But fortunately for speedrunners, we can just memorize a solution and complete the puzzle. So I will do that now. And there's a pretty cool route for that. Oh, I messed it up a little bit. Fortunately, it's not too hard to correct, but it does have a little bit of time loss. Okay. Yeah, one wrong input during that whole sequence and it can really throw you off. <laughs> All right, and this is Alula. Alula is going to follow us around for a little bit. But before we return Alula to Calamus, we're going to do uh, a little mini game because now is a pretty good time to do that. The game's not requiring us to return her immediately. We can go off and, and do something else while we're here. It saves a bit of time versus having to go back and do it later. Uh, do so, we have time for one more donation? Yeah, go for it. I'm just going to do a quick puzzle. We have a $300 donation from Anonymous with a shout out to our Japanese restream for cluing them into this marathon. So thank you so much for your generosity and to anyone watching on our Japanese restream, thank you so much and we appreciate your support. Oh my God, that's awesome. That was a RAM puzzle. We just have to put all the RAMs in their spots. It's a pretty fun puzzle. And now with that, we can go back and return Alula to Calamus. And as a thank you, they're going to invite us back to their place and we're going to get a little feather. And that feather is going to be really important because we're going to use it to make a pen. And we need this pen to go to the next area of one shot. Also, shout outs to Lula kicking that block and running over to the door at 200 miles per hour. Also, this game has really cool art. It's one of my favorite things about this game is the art style. The art was made by Night Margin. So now we're pretty much ready to leave, almost. We need to do two more things. We need to pick up the sun back from Maze, where we left at the beginning. And then we have to use the wool we got as a reward for doing the RAM puzzle. And we're going to trade that for some ink. So now we have the sun again. 
it can be surprisingly hard to see what's going on without the sun. Like the, the, the area surrounding Nico without it is surprisingly dark. So now we're just going to walk over here. Go up here and talk to the trader. I'm going to select my wool before I do that. And now we're going to go to the gate and take a nap before we leave. Because we want to make sure that, uh, that we're doing good on sleep. And after every, every nap, you get a really cool dream sequence where you see some art of whatever Nico is dreaming about. So here I'm going to pick the bottom answer for every single one because it's slightly faster. And right there, I just crafted the feather pen. And we need that to sign a scroll. We can't go through this door without the scroll. With that, we're on our way to the refuge, which is the third part of one shot. We did the outer ring of the world, which was the barons, and we just completed the glen, which is the middle ring. And the inner ring is the refuge. And at the very center of the circle is the tower. Just to kind of give an idea of where we're at in the world. All right. And yeah, that purple, uh, that purple structure in the background is the tower. That is where we're going. But before we do that, we have to get down to the city level. As you can see, we're really high up. And in order to do that, we have to get on an elevator. But unfortunately, there's a bit of an issue with the elevator. It's broken. Well, the button is at least. We have to fix the button in order to use the elevator. And this character here is called a lamplighter. He's really cool. We're gonna be hanging out with him for a little bit here in the refuge, the upper part of the refuge. But before we get parts to assemble the button, I'm gonna take a nap, even though it's been like a minute since we last slept. Now we have another dream sequence where Nico eats some delicious pancakes. So after this dream sequence, I'm gonna be um, doing a very small exploit. You're not supposed to travel indoors, but in this one specific room, you're able to travel fast travel indoors. So it saves a bit of time from having to walk out of the room. So yeah, we need some stuff to construct that button. So first I'm gonna go over here and get some magnets as well as some scissors. And we're just gonna be walking. So one thing that you don't really see in this game all too much in the speed run is the really good writing. This game is really story heavy. And like some of the side conversations that you have with NPCs and some of the side quests you do are really cool. That's one of my favorite parts about playing this game casually is the story and the characters. All the characters are really likable and well done. So I feel like the strong story plus the really cute art style plus the dedicated communities of one shot really make it a, a really cool game. So now that we got the button and the scissors, we're gonna go over here, construct the can with the scissors. And now we have a magnetized button. So one cool little Easter egg is that if you try to use the button right now, it's gonna fall apart because there's nothing holding it together. And it will give you an item called You Tried, <laughs> which is basically the, the crumbled up button. And in order to fix it, you gotta do what I did just there and uh, use the tape to tape it all together. And now it works. But there was some squares in the elevator. That's the thing about this game, the squares. The squares are up to no good. Also, that code I just entered, it is fixed, which means I can just memorize it and enter it on my own. But there's this really cool puzzle where you open up a computer terminal and it gives you this like sheet of paper with all these numbers on it. And if you drag the physical game window to the edges of your monitor to where like parts of it are off screen, it'll reveal the code. It is one of the coolest puzzles in the game. 
Very cool. Yeah. We have enough. Do we have time for one more donation? Yeah, go for it. Now's a good time as I prepare for a big skip. Awesome. We have a $25 donation from Code Gorilla who says, This one shot run is great. I played this game for the first time earlier this year, and I've definitely got a soft spot for it. Good luck with the rest of the run. Thank you, and thank you so much for your donation. There's a really cool part coming up. So I'm going to be preparing a really big skip. You remember that library card part where you have to like go around and get all the lenses and take all the pictures and do the light puzzle? Well, turns out you can just skip all of that by clipping through this barrier. You walk into it as you close the game, and that skips the entire part. Because to get past that barrier casually, you need to complete all of that stuff I just mentioned. And that saves an enormous amount of time. It is one of the coolest things about One Shot. I know I've said a lot of things about this game are cool, but that especially is really cool. And Nico has a nightmare. Unfortunately, their dreams are not all good. But yeah, so what just happened there? We went behind the counter and we gave the book to George. You might remember from that one donation earlier, they talked about George and we got George too. You can get uh, you can get uh, six different Georges, which means you get six different sets of dialogue and it's all randomized. So each run's gonna have a different George. And I have to do the skip again in order to exit the barrier. Awesome, that's really good. That skip can be pretty easy to mess up sometimes. Yeah, that was the second slowest George. So unfortunately, I did not get the best luck there. Oop, I fast traveled to the wrong place. So now we're going to the tower, the tower that I've been hyping up for the entire run. We're finally going there. And in this tower, there's gonna be a few more puzzles to complete. The puzzles act as sort of a final boss. We got some tile puzzles and we have a huge maze coming up. We also have another donation coming up. Go for it. Now's a great this time. time. We have $2 from non-binary code that says no comment here. I swear. Oh, wait. So thank you for that $2. We always appreciate it. Mild scare from Softlock. Yeah, so one thing about Kip Skip, which is what that skip is called, there's a possibility of softlocking on it. Thankfully, it's pretty rare to happen, but it has happened before to runners, and if you softlock there, it can be pretty hard to recover. It has been a really long time since I've ever softlocked on it, but it's definitely, <laughs> definitely something to be scared of, that's for sure. So here we have the computer telling Nico, like, hey, we're done here. You saved the world and all that. But in reality, we haven't saved the world. We haven't put the sun back. Nico's still here. They're trying to trick us. And during this sequence, uh, we can't communicate with Nico. That's kind of the thing with One Shot, is that you have a connection between the player and Nico. And right now, Nico can't communicate with us. And now begins the tower, which has some pretty cool puzzles. We have this maze, which we're going to speed up exponentially by memorizing the solution to the maze. There's a really cool mechanic here where you'd overlay a separate program onto the game itself to, uh, to reveal the solution. Same with these doors here. Two, three, one, two, one. And then we have two, two, four, two, two. And then we have three, one, four, two, three, and two. So that's it for the doors. And now we have a huge tile puzzle. This is a lot like the ones that, the one that we saw for Alula, but on a much larger scale. So here I'm gonna do this. Got to be really careful not to misstep. All right, it's awesome. So then we do a little dot in the center. Very easy. Very, very easy. And this last one is the light bulb. We're going to make a little light bulb picture. 
let's see how I do on this. Wow, perfect light bulb in a marathon. Let's go. That oh. one is surprisingly easy to mess up. So now we're approaching the end of the game. Uh, we're almost done. We got about another minute and a half in the run. But before that happens, we got another huge, huge thing happening. Check this out. I'm going to do another close the game strat right here, similar to Kip Skip. And when I reopen the game, I'm going to be in a no clip state, which means I can walk out of bounds and go wherever the heck I want. I can walk through the wall here, through the couch, and then skip this entire portion by walking out of bounds to the very end of the section here. And now we're in the elevator. Time's gonna be coming up in roughly 30 to 40 seconds. And we're gonna be delivering the sun back to the tower. But we're presented with a choice. We can either save the world or save Nico. Throughout the entire game, we've been led to believe that the, the ending is to save Nico, but in reality, we have a choice. Do we save the world that we've got to know in this journey, or do we save Nico? It's a really tough choice to make. Time's gonna be coming up in a few seconds. And time. That, is a tw that was about a 24 minute flat in-game time, by the way, without any loads, which is really good. That is not far off from my personal best at all. So I'm really Way happy about go. that. Yeah. Great job. Pat, can we get some GGs for this great run? Thank you. Yeah, that was one shot. It's one of my favorite games casually, and it's also a really cool speed run. Want to give a massive shout out to the one shot community for being really cool. It's one of my favorite speedrunning communities to be in. It's really cool. chill, and everyone's really passionate about the game, and everyone really supports each other. It's, it is fantastic. And I'm Careful. happy to be a one-shot speedrunner. And of course, massive shout outs to, uh, to the developers of OneShot who have been very supportive of the speedrunning community. They added an auto mash feature, which automatically skips the text frame perfectly. So you don't have to mash anymore and runners don't have to deal with hand pain or anything like that, which is really cool. And uh, yeah, very thankful for their support. And thank you so much, uh, Midwest Speed Fest, for having me and accepting one shot. This game means a lot to me, and I'm really happy to show it off in front of your audience. Wonderful, and we're very glad to have yeah, had you. Yeah, of course. We're actually uh, quite early, so if, if there was maybe like 10, 15 minutes of like glitch exhibitions in this game, that'd be good. But if not, that's okay. Hmm. I don't think there's anything that I can really show off in terms of glitches. I think every, just about everything was done. Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. no worries. Yeah, you can't, stretch. you can't see it right now, but the game pulled up a, an error saying script interpreter line 146 type error occurred. No implicit conversion of integer into string. But yeah, um, that was one shot. Oh yeah, I can talk about the uh, the utility real quick, more about the utility. It has some really cool practice saves and it makes practicing one shot really easy. It also shows a save code, of course, like I mentioned before as well. It tells you if the Clover program is open, which you need to do to in order to do that. And yeah, it's it's a really cool game. Also has a load remover, so in-game time is consistent. Doesn't matter what kind of computer you have or anything. And uh, there's a lot of resources, and there's an active Discord server, of course, with the active, awesome Discord community and all that. Yeah, that's about all I got to say. I am very happy, and I hope everyone enjoyed. Deltarune is going to be a pretty cool run. I know. I, I I don't know too much about Deltarune, but. I know it's a good game, and I'm sure it's a cool speed run, so be sure to check that out.